Right now, you might feel like every single subject of yours is pulling you in different directions. Your maths teacher wants you to focus on past papers. Your English teacher wants you to write more essays. And your science teacher wants you to memorize more formulas. And history, well, history wants you to memorize 100 years worth of history. It's exhausting. And no matter what you do, it never seems to be enough. But listen, there is a way through this. You are not the first student going through this in your life. Millions before have come and done this. So I'm going to share with you some things that you can do to deal with the stress, handle the workload and still find time to breathe. Let's go. So what's actually happening? You see, every subject thinks that they are the most important subject and they're giving you tasks to do, things to do, coursework, assignments, projects, all sorts of things. And this is causing you so much anxiety. And on top of all this, you've got your own personal life, you've got your family life and your own mental health to look after. And it's easy to feel completely drained. The stress builds up and then what happens? You either procrastinate saying that you will do it, but it never gets done, or you sit at your desk for hours, but nothing seems to go in. I bet that sounds so familiar. Now you must realize one thing, you actually can't do all of this in one go. You must start to prioritize different things. You have to be smart about this. Now you can't give equal attention to all your subjects all at once. This is what some people try to do and they can't do this. What you must ask yourself is, what are you good at and what are you not so good at? So for example, if you're good at English, you can kind of leave English for a bit and maybe you're not so good at maths, that's a disaster. You can give maths more time right now until you're comfortable with it. The trick to time management here is that you will create a priority list for each week. So you might have a week where you're focusing on maths more than other subjects. And then the following week, it might not be maths anymore. It might be another subject that you need to focus on. And then maths becomes a lesser subject for that second week. So create a priority list like this for every single week, rather than a long list. And there's no time on when you have to get things done because you're going to look at that long list and think, when am I ever going to get that done? And this will make you feel really guilty. So don't do that. You need to prioritize like a boss. The next thing that you want to do is create a free subject a day rule. This means that you don't study six subjects in a day because let's face it, you're not gonna do that. Rather, say to yourself, you're gonna study three subjects in any particular day. Something that you're good at, not so good at, and something that you're really weak at. And those will become your priority subjects to do in that day. And you will rotate them throughout the week. So the level of priority will change. Another thing that you should really focus on is the one hour rule. Students often think that they're gonna bang out revision like a whole day in the weekend, like a whole Saturday. You are not going to be able to sit at your desk for eight hours studying. I mean, if you can, great on you, but most normal people can't do that. So tell yourself that you are going to work for one power hour. And in that one power hour, you are going to smash it out. And the rest of the day, you can do whatever you like with it. What will happen is this. Once you get started with that one hour, you probably end up doing more than an hour. But the fact that you tricked your brain into doing some work by saying to the brain, you're only going to work for one hour. The rest of the day is yours. Your brain is happy and you're happy because you get some work done. So use the one hour power rule. Also, another really powerful revision technique that I teach my students is not just to read content over and over again. Our brains, they can't consume all that information. Rather, read something for around 20 minutes, study something for around 20 minutes, close the book, and then speak out loud. Tell yourself what you have learned. Tell yourself what you have worked on. If you can find somebody that you can teach it to, even better. Because what will happen is, if the other person understands what you've told them, then that means you've learned it well. And of course, if they don't understand, then that means you, go and, you need to go and hit those books again and learn that thing properly. Another really effective thing that not only helps you, but helps others, is to actually find a study buddy. But make sure you choose wisely because you don't want to find somebody who's just gonna waste more time and talk about football or TikTok or shows that they've seen. You want somebody who is going to encourage you. Maybe, you know, give each other mini challenges, you know, test each other on content that you're both learning. Or it could even be just somebody who just sits there in silence, doing their work while you're doing yours. But make sure that you choose this person wisely, as I've said, because this person is supposed to raise you up rather than bring you down. And lastly, guys, if you're ever feeling like really, really stressed out, you know, hit the reset button. What is the reset button? The reset button is a button where you just get up, walk away, go and do something completely different. Go for a five minute walk. If you're so overwhelmed, you just can't take in information anyway. So you're wasting your time and you're creating more stress on your body. So get up, splash some cold water in your face, come back to it at the end.
Remember guys, the GCSEs are not the end and be all. There is a life beyond this. Even if you don't do so well, there is things that you can do at sixth form. There are options there for you. You've got retakes. Life doesn't end here. However, if you do work hard, then you will only benefit yourself. And you would maybe even look back at this period of your life one day when you're an adult in later life and think, I'm glad I went through this. There's a lot that I learned. So make sure that you use this period wisely. These are probably going to be the most stressful, most difficult period of your life these next three months. But remember, you also get the longest break in your life because trust me, once you hit adult life and working every day, 28 days holiday per year, you're not going to get this break. So use it wisely and make the most of it. I wish you guys all the very best. And if you have any questions, any comments, then you can leave them in the video link below and I will answer some of them. Goodbye for now, guys. And I hope you smash this year.